one of the simplest ways to set about explaining macroeconomics and an examination of a, a nation's economy, for example, is to use uh, a model we call the circular flow. The circular flow, and we'll present it very simply here for now, really lets you crystallize on the circular activities that take place in the economy, mostly buying and selling, and how in the operation of that circular flow there are a lot of positive spin-offs to the economy such as jobs and incomes and more toys to buy. When we look at the circular flow in its simplest sense, let's just take a single transaction. In this case, Mehmet is going to sell a vase or some pottery to George. George is going to pay for it in some currency, pounds, dollars, yen, euros. And in here we illustrate a very simple basic principle, but one that too often people don't understand. For example, George is going to give Mehmet a hundred dollars, let's say. Mehmet's going to surrender the vase. This must mean that George wants the vase, values the vase more than he does his one hundred dollars. And for Mehmet, the one hundred dollars is worth more to him than the vase. So as a result of the transaction, both parties are better off both have improved their position. Think about what that means in terms of any sort of exchange. We will refer to the principle of exchange repeatedly throughout any study of economics. Trade, exchange are based on this principle and it is trade and exchange that allows us all to work on improving our positions in life, our enjoyment of life. Think again with me, for any relationship to be successful, each party to that transaction must feel they are getting more from the relationship than they are giving. And this is true in every relationship, whether it's a business transaction or a friendship or a romantic attraction to one another, you must ensure that your partner feels that he or she is receiving more than he or she is giving. So if a relationship isn't working very well in any sense, business, friendship, romantic, take a look. Take a look at yourself. How well are you doing at improving the other person's position? And what are you getting in return? And if you feel like you're giving up more than you're getting, then you need to examine the relationship and perhaps renegotiate it. It's a simple principle of economics and it's fundamental to human interaction. And all of that is absolutely essential to understanding how a macro economy operates. Let's take a, a little broader look at the economy using what we call a two-sector circular flow model. There are two parts to the household, to, pardon me, to the economy here. There are households, people like you and I, and there are businesses, organizations which operate to produce goods and services. Look first at the orange arrow. We are trading our labor to businesses in return for, look at the bottom orange arrow, whatever products and services they produce. It's a trade, basically. It's a transaction. The transaction is made smoother by the in inside circular flow, the light green arrows. We spend money buying the products and services, what we will call consumption spending by households, and businesses, in return, pay us for our labor in whatever currency we're operating in. With this as a beginning, perhaps we can see that as long as this circular flow is strong, businesses have plenty of customers, we have plenty of jobs, and the economy, the businesses are producing goods and services that help improve our lives. From a practical sense, as long as consumers and businesses are both spending, that is, you and I are buying goods and services, businesses are paying us in our wages, the economy creates jobs, 
products and services, a higher standard of living, a better life. It also increases opportunities for the future as you and I think in terms of, gee, what kind of business could we build? This strong circular flow creates a better future. However, when spending, either on the part of businesses or on the part of households, for whatever reason begins to fall, it creates a loss of jobs. Businesses no longer have as many customers, so they don't need as many workers. So there is less spending going on at the businesses, so they produce fewer goods or services. So we get a loss of jobs, a decline in incomes. This repeats itself, a further reduction in spending. And this reduction in spending, which businesses would tell you is a reduction in sales, is what we are referring to when we use the term recession in the economy. And we will use that term a lot. We don't like recessions. It means lost jobs and all the things that go with that, and we'll explore that. And it means lost profits for businesses and businesses closing down. Also not good. One of the goals of macroeconomics is either to avoid or if we can't avoid it, to at least mitigate or minimize the severity of a recession and a depression and the misery they cause. Let's see the difference between a recession and a depression as we continue. The Great Depression in the United States of America we refer to uh, as a period roughly from uh, October 1929 until the beginning of World War II in December of 1941. You can quibble about exactly when the Great Depression ended, but it's pretty clear that it began in 1929. There were huge losses in jobs. Businesses saw huge losses in sales. And this lingered on from 1929, when Herbert Hoover was president, into 1933, when Franklin Roosevelt took office, on up through 1937, in fact, in 1937, things were getting to be much improved. We were coming out of the Great Depression. And then, again, for reasons we'll look at later, we slid back down into the Depression uh, with a lack of jobs until World War II started. Now, prior to World War II, the, Ameri the Americans were building up their forces, and we were putting some folks to work by putting them in uniform and training them to be soldiers, and sailors, and Marines. But with the beginning of the war formally in 1941, we definitely created plenty of jobs for many, many young men. And in many cases, their wives or girlfriends or sisters took over their jobs in the factories. Thus, we had even more jobs created that way. We'll take a longer look at the Great Depression and see what the macro and economics involved were. But let me leave you with the idea that a recession is bad, but a depression is much worse. A depression creates not just lost jobs and lost incomes, but it creates broken families, horrible living conditions, a loss in self-confidence and self-image. It's a bad time. Returning again to the more positive view, a healthy circular flow means for consumers there's jobs, there's incomes, Plenty of spending going on, a lot of things to buy, you can afford them, your living standards are going up. Uh, it's, a, it's a good time, but it's also a good time for businesses because business is booming. There are plenty of customers, they're spending like crazy, and you're just making lots of profits and going home a happy person. So our goal overall in macroeconomics is to ask, how can we create a healthy circular flow, a healthy economy with all these positive attributes, and how can we avoid having that challenged or having that lost?